Chris Academy Vikings versus Centerbird Trojans. For a second consecutive night, Centerbird looks to protect their house, seeking a fifth straight win against a suitable rival and visiting Columbus Academy, coming off wins in four of their last five. We've got a duel on the hardwood between the Trojans and Vikings, making its way to your smartphone, tablet, or TV, the only way we know how. And that's live and free, baby, coming up next. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Celebrating 20 years of service at 164 East Main Street in Centerburg. Family owned and operated with premium products and services. So make it Webb's and get what you need to keep your engines running. Proud sponsor of Trojans Basketball. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. Live and free, Boys High School Hoops grace your eyes for the second straight night from the heart of Ohio where Centerburg defends their home floor against Columbus Academy, trying to extend their four-game win streak right now. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the House of the Trojans. I'm Brian Skronsky. I will be joined here in just a moment by Travis Berardi. And what a win for Centerburg last night, handing previously unbeaten state-ranked Fredericksburg, Fredericktown, their only loss of the season, 62-58. They had the right mixture to get it done last night, but what are the recipes for success tonight? Our resident chef, Garrett Parlett, is standing by with some key ingredients. G-Man, what do you got cooking? Thank you, Brian. It's gonna be an exciting game tonight, so get your popcorn ready. For Centerburg, there's a few key ingredients 
Carter Jones being one of them, a dominant force down low, can rebound the ball, pass at the post, and score, obviously. The salt of his pepper, Mick Mead, gets it done defensively, can shoot the three ball, and is a great facilitator for the Vikings coming here on the road. Going to be a tough task to beat the Centerberg team. However, feed it to their big three, Hess, Reeves, and Compton. The cookies and cream, the bread and butter, get it done for the Vikings fans out there. So that's your key ingredients for both sides. Let's see if they can get it done. All right, appreciate it, G-Man. Thanks for those recipes to success. As you see the starting lineups being announced out on the floor, there is A.J. Johnson, a very well-liked player here at the Berg. Let's go ahead and meet the starting lineups for both sides now. There they are, Carter Jones, the lone senior on the squad for Centerburg. He is certainly the straw that mixes the drink around here. Six foot five, he does it all, averaging a double-double. There he is, sporting the number zero tonight. On the other side, we got Compton, Hess, Logan, Farber, and Reeves. Let's welcome Travis Brardy back onto the call now. And Speaking of those recipes for success, when you have too much of a good thing, Travis, there can be a concern for a hangover. Delicious victory last night for the Trojans. Hopefully they didn't overfill on too much praise. Yeah, and I mean, this Columbus Academy team isn't one of the bottom dwellers in their league. They played some tough competition, 6-4, and four, but they lost to a Bexley team at 6-3 and three by 6 points. They lost to Whitehall, a game that they had a 5-point lead in the fourth quarter. They're 9-7. and seven. They lost to Fredericktown by 4 points, and we know Fredericktown is 13-1, and one, so this team is a pretty good squad, and coming out of that Columbus area, you know they play basketball down there. They've won the tip. Opening possession belongs to the Vikings. And you see the pressure defense by Mick Mead being applied. He has really had a strong season so far for this center Berg team. One of the stud juniors out here, and it is a junior-laden club, are the Trojans. Yeah, uh, with their 9-1 record right now is Carter Jones starting off strong. But, you know, successful season this year, but they're not going to lose a lot. They are going to lose a mammoth player in Carter Jones, but other than that, as Columbus ans answers with Compton for two, but they're going to be loaded next year as well. Yeah, everybody's going to be back with the exception of Jones, who is the defending K-Mac player of the year, a first-team All-Ohioan too. So it's not going to be easy to replace the likes of number zero. Especially but somebody that puts up a double-double every night. You know, Brian, this is a big game for Centerberg, not only trying to avoid the hangover, but if they get a win like this, that could possibly help evolve them into the state rankings. Yeah, not that that really matters a whole lot when you look at tournament draws and so on and so forth, but just understanding that you are being recognized and they see you throughout the entire state and not just in this area where they're going to com be competing in the sectional and district. It's just nice to uh, be recognized for your standout play. Definitely, and a win like last night, that pretty much assures them at least a top six or seven seed in that central district as Columbus with the first turnover of the night. But, you know, in that central district, it's broken up into two districts, so a win like that gets you a high seed. You may be playing at home for a couple games. Here's Jones, three Ooh. ball, nice release, and he knocks it down. Carter Jones off to a nice start here. Jones, 29% from beyond the arc, hits his first two. There he is defending, trying to come up with the turnover. As bodies hitting the deck, Griffith went to the floor. Stays with Columbus Academy, though. And it's going to be last touched here by the Vikings. Saw Reeves, their big guy, who's nearly averaging a double-double, working hard inside, but just couldn't corral it. Yeah, it's going to be big three versus big three tonight. You got Compton averaging double figures, Reeves averaging double figures, Hess just under, going against Carter Jones averaging 16 points, McMead averaging 10 points, and then you got Levi Houck who averages 8.3. Trojans has been filling it up from downtown so far throughout this season. I believe they knocked down a dozen triples last night in the win over Fredericktown. Yeah, you got to see a good one last night, Ski. That was about as much fun as I've had at a high school sporting event this year. As Jones is going to be called for the travel this time. 
Take another look. Not sure about that call. But yeah, anytime Fredericktown comes to town on comes to the OH report, seems to be a good game. I had their thriller at East Knox last week, last Tuesday, and then you get the great one last night. And already looking forward to that rematch when they're going to Fredericktown on February 12th. And we will have that one live and free right here on the OH Report as the Trojans once again hold Columbus Academy to one and done. Yeah, they just, they're collapsing on the bucket, getting a body on somebody, making it tough to get the offensive rebound. And, you know, four guys better than two, they'll come out with it. The law of averages right there as Jones sets up Meade, gets cut off. See Sennerberg attacking consistently, getting into the paint. Hustling there was Johnson, but couldn't keep it in play. Yeah, Alex Johnson, not known for his, you know, his scoring and his rebounding, but he's he, he's a hustler. He, he's the one that does the, that makes those hustle plays out there for the starting five. Helps pump the team up. There's an offensive foul. Parker Logan will shove off. That's a turnover. Yeah, definitely got that full extension. The official's probably going to blow the whistle every single time on that. Now you may maybe if you get a little nudge by the shoulder, they won't call it, but it's that extension of the arm that will get you every time. One three one look right now for Columbus Academy. Hasn't really given Centerberg that many problems as they get it inside. Missing it though, in tight though, was Johnson had a clean look at it. He had a nice game last night, averaging just a shade below five points per contest this year. But you, when you know there's a guy 6'6", six, six, Kevin Reeves coming at you, it might make you think, uh, think for a second when you're shooting underneath. Going to get a foul on the floor here. That's going to go against Reynolds, his first first team foul for the Trojans. Fast pace first quarter, we're already halfway through. And you got to really be excited about the defensive effort here so far by the Trojans holding this Columbus Academy team to just two points. And I think what I've liked most is how well they're working the defensive glass. Yeah, and, uh, you know, defense, it's big in the K-Mac. But, you know, everybody's talk, talking about Fredericktown and what a job they did. Centerberg has been playing solid basketball all year. I mean, their one loss coming to Worthington Christian, who's the number two team in Division Three, But this is a team that's been under the radar, and finally they got some loving last night with that big win against number five, Fredericktown. This is a team I've liked since the first time I've seen them when they defeated Northmore earlier on this year. Got a nice mix of lanky perimeter players as that one finds the bottom. Pull-up jumper from the foul line from Compton. Straight out of Compton there. He has the team's four points. Backdoor cut Johnson. This time goes high off the window and gets the bucket. And typically against a 1-3-1 press, you just got quick ball movement, and more likely enough, if you're going to have somebody open underneath is Compton once again with the runner. Six points for him. It's a two-point game. And again. Oh, Ooh. SWAT from the backside coming through was Compton. But he's going to be whistled for the foul. Let's go ahead and take one more look here at the replay. Nice look by Jones. Seeing right over the top of the double team. Yeah, he got yeah. the body on him, yeah. Mashed him pretty good. Johnson delivers on the first free throw offering. 33% free throw shooter this year. Brian knocks the first down, gets that confidence from the line early on. Got them both. And they'll push Senneberg into double digits now. Carter Jones almost with the steal. Columbus Academy will have to re-inbound it. Tough spot too, Brian. It's right, right on the edge of that baseline in the corner. Centerberg with a 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. And that one rims out. Offensive rebound inside for Reeves. And he has been a load so far in the lane up to this point. Centerberg's done a nice job on him. 
That'll be Reynolds' second foul. But yeah, Reeves on both ends really making his presence known in the paint. This is the first free throw. Sonari Hart checks in now for the Vikings. And he goes 0 for 2 on this trip. Great looking play there to keep it inbounds by Hart, fresh off the bench. Nice ball movement. They get it down on the block. Mishandled though, and a swarm of Trojans flying around Reeves. Man, tough ball handling right now for Columbus. Nearly turned it over twice. They got to calm things down on the offensive end. Great move inside. Reeves comes through this time. Yeah, Carter Jones couldn't do much with that. Reeves just backed him down and got the easy layup. Unforced air there. Johnson lost the handle and dribbled out of bounds. And he's been pretty heavily involved on the offensive end here in this first quarter, Travis. I mean, he's clearly a guy that Columbus Academy is going to allow to have the basketball and beat them. Yeah, primarily, like I said, a ball handler does the hustle plays. Nice pass inside to tie things up for Reeves. But for Johnson, I mean, only averaging 4.6 points per game, but he shoots 43% from the floor. So, you know, he'll have more assists than points on pretty much every given night. Trojans facing a 2-3 zone look right now. Really extending out onto those corners is Columbus Academy. So Centerberg still trying to dissect it, find the best way to attack, and this will help if it drops, and it will. Three ball finds its mark from Lee by Hauk. Like I said in the pregame, Hauk, 8.3 points per game, one of those big three coming off the bench with a huge tray to give him the lead back. Reeves has been virtually unguardable here in recent times, and that trend's going to continue. Here he is, just down low, head to head with Jones. And that's just two big bodies going, you know, toe to toe, squaring yeah. off inside. And I'm going to take a guess and say that's, you're going to see a lot of that tonight from Columbus Academy. And it's a perfect trip for Reeves to the free throw stripe this time. Trims the deficit down to just one as we're approaching 30 seconds to play. Fast moving first quarter here at the Berg. Look, this, look for Centerberg to actually slow it down here, possibly get that last shot off before the buzzer. Go inside. Here's Jones. Shot block from the backside. And as usual, basketball team's going the complete opposite of what I say. Looking for that open look inside. They will get possession back, though, with 20 seconds. Trojan's going to work it, get it to Mead in the corner. Four out set. Yeah, that's going to be a turnover. Yeah, they're going to say last touch by Mick Mead off of his foot. Tough break right there for Centerberg. So big chance here for Columbus Academy to head into the second quarter with an advantage. As they set up the double screen off of it. And here's Johnny Hill. Nope, they called it off. He did have it in his hand. Just after. So that's going to take us to the end of one. We're right now Centerberg on top, 13 to 12. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. 
Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. As we welcome you back to the heart of Ohio, we've got second quarter action. Centerburg with the Rock. They own a 13-12 advantage so far over Columbus Academy. My name is Brian Skronsky, joined by Travis Brody on the call tonight. That's the smooth lefty Carter Jones missing for the first time from long range here in this contest. Knocked down back-to-back -back triples to open up the scoring for Centerburg in this game. Yeah. Cooled off since then. Yeah, a couple... Three field goals, hot start, made it 8-2, to two, but then Columbus Academy settled in, getting to their game plan, and that's going to be a tough foul against Reeves about 95 feet away. Missed the layup, a little frustrated, reaches in, gets the foul. That'll be his first. But, yeah, they got back to their, their game plan. Compton and Reeves both with six points to lead the way. Yeah, super fun matchup that we're watching. 6'7 versus 6'6 six, six right now in the paint. And both really skilled athletes. As you see, Jones, quick trigger, finds the back iron, though. And it's Columbus Academy doing some glass work. And we're going to have a stoppage for possibly a little blood or... As Hart will... Run out of the gym, get that situated, and Compton will check back in. So it's Viking basketball. Just over a minute gone by here in quarter number two. No score yet in this frame. Vikings looking to change all that. But McMead got other plans. Great hustle there by Jared Castle to hit the deck and come up with that rock. Yeah. Good hustle by both sides. Oh, nice swat there. Yeah, great Comp hands by Hauk. Compton, you know, using that runner a couple times early on in the first quarter. This time, Hauk with, knew what he was doing, got the swipe. Here's Meade assessing the defense. Vikings going to stick with their zone. And that one off the top of the backboard. Not a great-looking shot there from Jack Gregory. Down in the post, Jones, quick hands. He's got the jump ball. Check yeah, this that's out. Just, that's just straight up and down. Got his hand on the ball looking for the block. Reeves comes back down with it. You, you're going to get the jump ball on that. It'll stay with Columbus, though. Oh, nice ball movement. Reeves inside was able to fit it into Hill. And he's got the kick out. This three off the mark from Cass. Wow. But they stick with it. Three opportunities, and then finally Columbus Academy comes through. Man, Reeves has really thrown his weight around in the final half of the first quarter here in a couple minutes of the second quarter. It's been all him to give Columbus Academy its first lead. Jones looking to match here at the other end. Lost the handle, though, into the hands of Hill. Pushing the pace. You can just see momentum completely shifting the, the Viking side after a strong start by the Trojans. Cass pulls it out there, being defended by Hall. Here he is again, of course, looking for Reeves down low. Instead, they'll get the three from straight away off target and tipped into the hands of Meade. Meade with a toss out to the corner. Great look. It's open, but it's off target there from Hall. Both teams not shooting well other than Carter Jones from outside the four-foot four arc down by the hoop. That was a tough runner that time by Compton. Ends with a one and done. Now here's Jones what a spinning move. over the right Ooh. shoulder. Gets the soft touch. 
Carter Jones, I mean, he has an inside-out game where he can hit the three, but his strong spot is inside with those post moves. They, he'll get the defender up in the air and then just make another nice move to get the easy shot. And that is why he was last year's player of the year in the KMAC. He's got the Trojans back within, or back on top, I should say. Nice hesitation in the finger roll at the rim, pure from Cass. Senderberg slowing things down. Landon Griffith over at the scores table, back to check back in. Columbus Academy now in a 2-3 zone. And Carter Jones once again gets the friendly bounce. He's now in double figures with 10 points already. I mean, this kid's got it all, man. Definitely got a beautiful touch. You see it just trickling off the rim. Back-to-back -back field goals for him. And then nobody does better Windex work here at Centerburg than Jones. Yeah, it's funny. He's already quickly approaching a double-double, and we're not even done with the first half. That was the case last night, too, in the win over Fredericktown. Almost went into the break with a double-double, so not uncommon for him. He does secure about half of Centerburg's total rebounds on the season, Travis, if you can believe that number. So you're saying he's uh, MVP material again this year then, Brian? Yeah, 5 on 2 right I would here. say he's uh, definitely among the league's favorite in the K-Mac. As once again, three-pointers remain off target. Gregory again misfire in there. And we've got a timeout. So it's going to be a full timeout. We were talking about this before the game. It's, it's Jones versus Reeves right now. Jones with 10 points, Reeves with 8 points. Uh, you got four from Johnson and Hauk to even things out for Centerburg, and then on the other side, it's been Compton at quick six points. But, yeah, it's been all Jones and all Reeves here in the past five minutes. And in a lot of ways, I mean, that's kind of what we expected a bit. It, Two really dominant players for their respective schools coming into tonight's game, both averaging right around a double-double. Of course, Carter is. You got to think, Brian. We're almost getting to the time. We're two weeks away from the. We're less than two weeks away from the tournament draw. These games not only you know get momentum trying to peak at the right time, but this is seeding. Like I was working on earlier, Centerburg can get a win tonight. That's just going to help their seeding out after knocking off the number five team in the state last night. You get a couple wins, you get on a roll, then teams from around the Columbus area, that central district, will start looking at you. Maybe you get a top five seed. Gives you a better chance at getting to either Ohio University or Bowling Green or, or wherever those regionals are, but those were the spots for the last few years. Yeah, without question. This game is big for both of these sides in terms of their tournament seating. It's a big leg up, nice feather in your cap if you can knock off a quality opponent, which both of these teams, of course, are. So I think maybe Bode's even a little bit better for Centerburg if they can knock them off, keep the momentum rolling. And also it show coaches that Centerberg's able to knock off back-to-back -back teams in back-to-back -back nights. Back-to-back -back good teams, I should say, in back-to-back -back nights as Centerberg turns it over for the sixth time tonight. Yeah, I didn't see much there out of the replay. I think they actually called, called it on Jones before the pass. Centerberg leading by one. Nice ball movement leads to this, but the cold spell shooting continues to make its way here through the gym. Yeah, Columbus Academy yet to hit from beyond the arc tonight. On the other end, Centerberg, three threes. Meade's going to try one quick trigger from the Ooh. corner, and he knocks it down. Big shot that time from Mick Meade. One of the main reasons why Centerburg is 9-1 this year is their ability to hit from beyond the arc. And you, like you saw last night, I believe you said in the third quarter, it was 
three after three after three after three. Yeah, seven threes made in the first three and a half minutes of the third. Nice runner that time by Tanner Compton. And he's done an excellent job so far of sizing up his opponent on the defensive end and understanding when to try to attack. And just being able to hit those shots on the move really, you know, makes you more of a lethal shooter because it, it, that's so much harder to guard when you're running and releasing at the same time instead of being a spot shooter. Down to 10 seconds, here he is again, this time just a bit too firm with the offering. And stepped out of bounds there, wasn't able to save it back into play. So 6.4 seconds is what the Trojans will have to work with here. We'll see if Centerberg can break this press, get an easy shot or drive and kick it for a quick three. We'll see. There's the kick and the shot. Oh, in and out. Just does rattle in and out for me. So that will take us to the end of two quarters where we've got a good one, folks. Just a two-point game right now as the Trojans on top, 20 to 18. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back. We'll have some halftime stats. Get you guys ready for third quarter action live in Free Boys High School Hoops. will return in just a moment. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Celebrating 20 years of service at 164 East Main Street in Centerburg. Family owned and operated with premium products and services. So make it Webb's and get what you need to keep your engines running. Proud sponsor of Trojans Basketball. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. Time here at the heart of Ohio, where after two quarters of play, the home team Centerberg is on top 20 to 18 over Columbus Academy as we dive into the halftime stats. Brian Skrowski, Travis Berardi with you. And as you take a look at those numbers, Travis, I think pretty obviously that goose egg in the three point column, pretty big right now for the Vikings. Everything else has been, for the most part, pretty even. And they've had open looks from beyond the arc, straight on open looks, just been too strong with it. Although they've been Kevin Reeves. It's the reason they're still in this game despite not hitting from beyond the arc. He has eight points. Most of their rebounds as well as Columbus has a three rebound advantage right now, 12-9. Turnovers though, Centerberg six to three. That's also helped the Vikings stay in it despite their slow shooting night thus far. 
And it's been a fun matchup, of course, in the paint between the two big dogs, that being Kevin Reeves, the six foot six inch junior for Columbus Academy, and the six foot five Carter Jones on the other side. Ten points now for Carter, who's closing in on a double double, and then eight points, I believe, for Reeves. Yep. That's correct. Uh, Reeves, both Carter Jones and Reeves approaching their season average points per game as well as Compton. But for Centerberg, you know, their other the other two of the big three, Mick Mead and Levi Houck, both only with three points right now. If they can get it going, hopefully, you know, extend that lead a little bit because you know from this Vikings squad throughout this season, they have a run in them in the second half. All right, folks, we are going to step away one more time. When we come back, we are going to go inside the eye of the storm, break down some of the biggest statistics of that first half. Stay with us. Live and free coverage of Boys High School Hoops returns in just a moment. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Celebrating 20 years of service at 164 East Main Street in Centerburg. Family owned and operated with premium products and services. So make it Webb's and get what you need to keep your engines running. Proud sponsor of Trojans Basketball. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. We are back in the heart of Ohio where those Trojans right there, the kids sitting on those chairs right now on a 20 to 18 advantage through two quarters of play. And we've got a special treat for you. We're gonna go into the eye of the storm right now to let you know exactly how that all came to be. Thank you very much, Brian. What the eye of the storm has noticed tonight is that it has been a complete battle down low in the painted area between Reeves and Jones. It has been so fun to watch these two go at it all night long, just trading buckets on either end. The post scoring has been insane for both teams. So let's see what kind of halftime adjustments both these teams will make coming out of the break. But I think that's all I got for the eye of the storm. I'm gonna send it back up to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Back to you, Brian. All right, appreciate it, Storm. And it looks like it's really coming down out there. A lot of snow coming in here tonight. And probably a lot of that has to do with the cold shooting that we've seen from both sides. In particular, I would say from Columbus Academy. 
from three-point range. They have not knocked down a three ball as of yet. We'll see if that can all change here over the next two quarters of play. I think they're definitely going to need to knock down some threes if they want to get back into this game. You know, it's only a matter of time for them. If they can keep getting those open looks, one's got to go down, and then once one goes down, you know, they'll get that momentum and it'll start going. But it's for Centerberg. Can they continue to go? Not just Carter Jones, but can everybody else on the squad, those other two of the big three, can they start scoring as well? They did start it late. They hit both hit a three late there in the first half. We'll see if they can continue that and add on to the points. Got under a minute to go before third quarter play opens up. Huge game tonight for both sides. The Vikings winners in four of their last five. And then on the other side, there's the Trojans looking for their fifth consecutive victory. The defending Kings of the K-Max stepping out of conference here tonight, but they've got a back-end loaded schedule because of the quarantine issues. Travis, it's going to be NBA style for them and had an opportunity to talk with their head coach and then Carter Jones about that last night. And boy, are they up and excited for this challenge. When you're away from the game and you can't practice together and be, you know, a combined unit like they want to be typically at this point in the season and then you get it back I think it's just kind of relit their fire and they're really excited for these last couple of weeks yeah and just the ability to come out of quarantine after those those two weeks off and still be able to play good basketball those five straight wins including say it once again that big win last night against state ranked Fredericktown to put them atop the K-Max standings a game ahead of Fredericktown three ahead of Cardington which they had a great game an overtime victory against them here earlier this year and then four ahead of an East Knox squad so not uh, this this is out of conference but you still want that momentum to go and we'll see if fatigue becomes a factor at any point here in the second half playing the second back end of a back to back here for Centerberg Lucky for them, no traveling, though they give it away here. Compton picks it off. So they have at least had the home cooking here the last two days. Yeah, and the schedule really helped them out after this. There's another threes missed by Columbus. And it's Griffith with the rebound, pushes back the other way, and I noticed the Sonari Hart into the starting lineup, the senior here for the second half. He came off the bench to kick things off in the first quarter. So coach must have liked something that he saw from him, Jeff Washler. And you can't like that if you're a Trojan fan. Back-to-back -back turnovers, and there's Hart spinning one in. Yeah, two possessions, two turnovers. Brings this game even now at 20. Trojans need to just slow things down, get back to how they started the game. Good ball movement, looking at the open man, getting good shots. Griffith double team trapped as he tried to dribble out of the corner. Centerberg's going to hang on to possession here, though. Yeah, Columbus Academy in one of those two, three trapping zones. They've played good defense so far here tonight. Have the Vikings so far holding Centerberg in check. Just 20 points for them. And that's what they've been doing all season. Another turnover by the Trojans. So three turnovers in the first minute 49. But Columbus Academy, they've been playing good defense all year. Held Fredericktown to 52 points in their losses. Morgan only scored 45 points. Whitehall, 58. Bexley, it was 39-33. And then in their wins, 52 points, 37 points, 32 points, and 20 points. Empty trip there. Reeves almost was able to pull in an offensive board, but instead here comes Meade pushing the pace, putting some pressure on the defense, leaves it off for Jones. Oh, Missed the bunny, got his home miss, and he's going to head to the free throw line. That's another good characteristic from Carter Jones. He'll miss it, but he's right there for the putback in case he does miss. You know, most, most players will go up for that first shot, get this disgruntled 
after the miss and not really go for that second. But Carter Jones, he's a he's a different breed of basketball player here in the K-Mac. And had a great conversation last night after the game with Coach Morefka, who told me that he is just an excellent practice player, always brings it, has the intensity high, and has been a great role model for this junior class. Show them how to do it properly as they take over next season. Wow, what a four shot. Compton just threw that up with a man in his face and banks it in to give him the lead. 4-1 run here to start the second half for Columbus Academy to give them a one-point lead. Being a little bit more aggressive, having their guards come out and defend on the perimeter here to open up the third quarter. And it's been super effective. Almost came up with another rip and had a fast break opportunity, but instead called for the foul. What Centerberg's trying to do is they're trying to dribble into the middle of that zone, get them to collapse on them, and then kick out for the open three. But Columbus Academy, as Hart's called for his first. Nice offensive rebound. And Johnson will go to the line, but Columbus Academy able to get their hands in there, get a couple strips away, not allowing Centerbird to get that kick out. There's a six foot two junior, Johnson on the line. Short on his first offering from the charity strike. It's his first miss after going two for two. Trying to get his fifth point here and tie things up. Empty possession though, right there. Here's Reeves, strong move, quick acceleration, adding to his totals. Yeah, once Reeves gets in isolation one-on-one -on -one with Jones, it's pretty tough to guard that. We'll get a foul. Johnson will go back to the line, look to make up for the two misses he just had. It's a great feed right there by Jones, and I imagine that Johnson a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to cap that one off. Against Parker Logan, his third. Daniel Farber will check in for him. Fourth team foul already in the second half for Columbus Academy. Could become a big factor, but not if Centerberg cannot convert their free throws as Johnson goes one for four on his last two trips. Yeah, Alex Johnson only a 33% free throw shooter at 50% right now in the game, but you know, it's tough, especially if Centerberg only being a 43% free throw shooting team it may come down to that tonight. You know, and it could be strategy for the second half of the season for some teams. Do a little hack a Trojan, put them on the line where they're not quite as comfortable. Looked like Jones got poked in the eye there, so it's going to be an official timeout, allow him a little bit of opportunity to collect himself. Completely inadvertent, but, you know, when you're in the trenches down there, you're going to get an elbow or an eye poke every once in a while. It's good to see him being able to continue here. And Jones always battling down in the trenches, never shy of going head-to-head uh, -head with anybody. Stepping into a wide open three is Reynolds. Rebounded by Reeves. So both teams, cold start from beyond the arc to start the second half. Pull-up jumper. Bit ill-advised there, but the offensive rebound to Farber. Spinning, shooting is Cass. Tipped up, and the third time is the charm for Reeves. Once he gets established down there at the block, especially when a shot goes up, it's gonna be it's really tough to get him to move, and when the ball comes right into his hands, just not it, even it, fair. It's, it's just it's done. Yeah. But you gotta credit that to him understanding his position on the floor and making sure that he's in the right place, right time. 
McMead passed up an attempt from beyond the arc right there. He's been quiet so far tonight offensively. Just three points so far for Mick. Some double figure scoring last night and is one of only two Trojans to average in double figures. 10.4 per contest for him. Oh, and an errant pass there looking for Carter Jones. Tenth turnover by the Trojans tonight. 2.45 left in the third. And you sense a little bit of frustration certainly from these guards of Centerburg as they are unable to solve this riddle of the zone defense by Columbus Academy. Nice athletic play right there by Sonari Hart, but it's going to end up in the hands of the Berg. And that's how Centerberg's been getting most of their defensive rebounds inside, trying to tip it away from Reeves and get the long rebound. They've, that's the only success they've had in the paint against him tonight. Johnny Hill checking in for the Vikings. And I see you guys out there commenting in the section on our Facebook feed. So here in just a moment, we'll go through some of the top comments and put you on our fan zone. That's a great pass. Nice look. How can't make them pay. Levi Hauk, usually a great three-point shooter for this team. But on the other end still, Unable to get in from beyond the arc for Columbus. That's really kept Centerberg in right here in the second half. Is the cold shooting from outside the paint by the Vikings. But how about Centerberg? Six minutes gone by here in this third quarter. They got two total points, Travis. Both from the free throw line as well. They have not hit a, a field goal here in the second half. I think you mostly have to credit the Vikings and the way that they've been able to pre pressure, particularly on the perimeter, and then... They force another turnover right there. I don't right think there. he was out of bounds. I th he slid his foot a little bit, but I do not think that touched the line. I was looking right at it, too. So a lucky break there for Columbus. Yeah. It's going to be Gregory with the giveaway, and here comes Columbus Academy with the basketball. They've got a four-point cushion. Hess looking inside, wanted to get it to Reeves, trying to work against Jones. Oh, nice screen. Oh, rejection. The SWAT team coming through, patrolling the lane right there for Centerberg. And Jones, it looked like it might be an offensive foul. Instead, this is going to go against Johnny Hill. Let's go back to the other end and check out that SWAT. Yeah, what? Coming from behind, too. It was Hauk working the weak side defense. Johnny Hill just got there a second too late, almost in position, but still moving a little bit to his right. That's why the referees called that a block instead of a charge. And for Jones, he didn't lower the shoulder, which helps his cause for that block call. Under a minute left in the third, and still without a field goal. The latest miss from Meade. Tried one from downtown, but the view, not so kind that time. We're approaching 30 seconds to go here in the third. We're going to get a foul. This is going to go against Alex Johnson. Looked like he hooked a cut in Columbus Academy player. Only the second team foul. Reeves got in deep, collected his own miss, and looked like he got bumped on the floor. Third foul now against Centerberg. Oh, great look that time from Johnny Hill. I just don't think that Reeves was quite expecting it. Johnny had a lot of space. And I think Kevin just expected him to put it up. Yeah, and that's a, that's a rare turnover, only their fifth of the game. Now with 15 seconds left, can Centerberg finally hit? No. That one well off the mark from Gregory. And then we're going to get Carter Jones on just a, a swipe. Yeah. 
So the last shot here of the third quarter likely will belong to the Vikings as Hess brings it across the timeline right through the chest of Meade. But it's going to be Mick picking up the foul. So a couple of cheap fouls here over the mm -hmm. last several seconds on Centerberg, and those are big now both sides with five team fouls. Wow, a, a turnover by Columbus Academy. That's a gift right there. Wide open was Cass, but overthrew him. So now Centerberg with three seconds left. We'll see what they can do. <laughs> they heave at the horn off target there from Mick Mead. And The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage shrinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofknox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. We are back for fourth quarter action from the heart of Ohio after a low scoring third. And real quickly, let's dive into the Facebook comments. You post, I read them. Let's start with Anissa Davis Parlett saying, outstanding job, Garrett Parlett and Storm Blunchley and all the work that they do behind the scenes. Centerberg with the steal there. Continue, Brian. Agreed. Uh, Linda Mendoza wouldn't be a broadcast without her weighing in. Awesome job, OH Report announcers on all you do. And yes, thank you, G-Man and Storm. I agree. Paula, watching from Kentucky, says, go Trojans. So does Charity. She likes the Trojans as well. A Wichita, Kansas fan, Vicki Rowland, also cheering on Centerberg. And that's what I got. So far right now from the Facebook And to fans. update you, Brian, Carter Jones went to the bucket, got stuffed, but it got knocked out of bounds. So Centerberg maintains control. And also on that possession, again, Meade, he passed by another attempt at three. So no field goals in the third quarter for Centerberg, who outscored 8-2 to two in that frame, Trav. And because of things like that on both sides, unforced errors, Centerberg's 12th, but yeah, Defensive battle throughout, and you know with this Columbus Academy squad, they, they don't give up a lot, but they don't score a lot either. The only time that they did score over 50 points, they won 77-70 against River Valley, but we know any team that plays River Valley is going to be a high-scoring affair. Excellent work along the perimeter. Ill-advised pass inside. It's broken up, though. Gregory disrupted that one. Haven't been able to get it to Reeves on the block here as of late, and we're going to get a traveling violation. This one's going to go against the Vikes. Yeah, five turnovers here in the second half, only three in the first, so things are getting a little sloppy right now. Centerberg matching their first half total already with 12, six in the first, six in the second half. We still have seven minutes left. But the big thing right now, Brian, Carter Jones, really the only player scoring for Centerberg, haven't seen much from Meade or Hauk as he's fouled inside. It's going to be Compton's second, team sixth, so Centerberg in the bonus the rest of the way. So no more fouls to give for the Vikings. We'll see if the Trojans are able to capitalize on that as Meade. Triples out of the short corner, going to bring it back up top. Errant pass again. This, this zone reminds me of a Syracuse 2-3 zone back when they were 
you know, winning national championships with Carmelo Anthony, but, you know, it's, it's a suffocating, more of a trap zone that the Vikings are using. It's definitely giving Centerberg a ton of fits as Jones appears to have picked up his third personal foul, and now Centerberg out of fouls to give. And that's just, you know, two of the bigs just jostling around underneath the hoop, getting position. The Centerberg takes a timeout, but, you know, sometimes you're going to get calls like that. So the Trojans, in an offensive funk here in the second half, have not knocked down a field goal. Their only points, and they only have two, have come from the free throw line. So any clean look that they can get offensively is going to be a welcome sight for them because they have not had many. While the shooting has been cold, Columbus Academy has really locked down on them and not given them good, clean looks at the basket. And that, that includes trying to get Carter Jones, who has been a non-factor here in the second half. Yeah, everybody, literally everybody's been a non-factor. But, uh, you know, players like McMead, you just have to start shooting. You might miss a couple, but you got to keep shooting until you make. That's, you're not even getting that many good looks. You gotta have, if you get an open look, you got to take it. These players have the ability to score the basketball, but they just have to have the confidence to shoot it. Look there, there's the cheerleaders. They don't even have anything to go goo goo gaga for right now. They would love to see a basket so they can get one of those chants rolling here in the heart of Ohio. Goo goo gaga. I like that, Brian. It's a cheerleading term. I thought that was a, a term used by an infant. Yeah, it has multiple uh, yeah, it's true. different purposes it's true. in the English language. It's all happy. It's all happy. So the deep toss brings Farber into the backcourt as the Vikings looking for what would be a big bucket right here. I mean, their cushion has been four for quite a while. And it just seems like it's more than that, Brian. It feels like Centerberg's down eight, ten points. But while Centerberg has struggled to score the basketball, as too has Columbus Academy, is that it's going to be a travel. They got the good look. They had the... The quick swing around the perimeter, open look inside the reeds, but that post move with Carter Jones right on his back, shuffled the feet, that's a walk, and Centerberg once again with a chance to finally break onto the scoreboard with a field goal. Every offensive possession right now just feels huge for Centerberg in, trying, in terms of trying to swing the positive momentum in their favor. They have not been able to have the pendulum land on their side of the equation here at all in the second half. We'll see if this can change things. It will not. Tipped up, and it's one and done, two after the miss from Gregory. 23-13, Columbus out rebounding Centerberg right now. Trojans unable to do any work on the offensive glass as that was a tough shot over a couple of defenders there by Hess. Jones fakes to the corner. There was nobody in the corner too and they still <laughs> made him bite. That's just <laughs> Carter Jones. They, they bite on everything because he's such a good player. And it just feels like there's six defenders on the floor right now for the Vikings. No matter where the Trojans go with the basketball, it seems like a double team is waiting, and nobody's open on the other end. And also something, they keep the middle of that zone open. They bait Centerberg to get somebody to cut in there and throw it because their guys are fast enough to cut it off and get the interception, and that's happened multiple times tonight and almost just did here. The quick release. Off target, tipped down, and it looks like Meade is going to chase down. A second yeah, opportunity, right late call. whistle, but yeah, I think you're right. Let's see. Well, all we're going to see is meet in the backcourt right there. The but turnover. Was, I believe it was tipped out by Meade himself. So another unforced error. And we are approaching the midway point here of quarter number four. And the Trojans stuck on two points here in the second half. Not much better on the other side. Columbus Academy also a little bit icy. Frozen in time is this score at 26-22. That's how we opened. Crunch time. Knocked out of bounds. Yeah, since that 13-12 first quarter, it's been 14-9 in favor of Columbus Academy the rest of the way. And another Centerberg miss. 
Yeah, there has been an icy cold front that has stormed its way through here in the heart of Ohio. I think the eye of the storm really uh, affected both of these teams. Yeah, there's no question. Saw that snow coming down here in the gym at halftime, and neither team has been able to recover as we've got a timeout on the floor. It's going to be just a 30-second timeout. And the Trojans, of course, reeling right now, but only down by four, as bad as it has gone for them. Talking about Columbus Academy earlier, only six and four, but they're in that tough mid-state league, Ohio division. They're in there with Worthington Christian, the number two team in the, in the state that uh, knocked off Centerburg, their lone loss. Buckeye Valley used to be in the MOAC. Now they're down here in this. Bexley, Whitehall, Yearling, Wellington, and Grandview Heights, those are teams that constantly in Division Three and Four make a regional every year. So this is a tough conference, tough division for Columbus Academy. And a 6-4 and four record, if you maybe 12-8, and that will still probably get you a high seed in the Central District. So a lot of brownie points in terms of the eyes of the coaches as we approach the tournament draw here in less than two weeks. This victory here tonight for either side, of course, could be key in terms of earning a home sectional game. And, you know, like the NCAAs, they're looking for that signature win. Well, Centerburg got one last night. Columbus Academy, as we're going to get a foul on Reeves, that'll be a second, and we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one for the Trojans finally with a chance to get on the board. But that Centerburg got a signature win last night that coaches in the Central District will be looking at for Columbus Academy. They did knock off a good River Valley team that's been up and down a couple other wins in their conference. But a win against a one-loss team that only lost to Worthington Christian, that's going to be a signature win for them. And it would be one for Centerburg, too, to solidify what they did last night. Just the third point here of half number two for Centerburg. And it's only a three-point game, Brian. But they split the pair. So the score remains 23-26. And you know, Brian, I, just looking at the, the JV players for Centerburg clapping, it really stinks that there's no fans in here because this place would be loud right now trying to get a turnover, trying to get the defense you know, up. But with only a quarter, even less than a quarter capacity, it it's, feels like a scrimmage. Well, and that's why it helps sometimes to have JV kids that are going to be engaged over on the sideline, try to bring some of that noise and, you know, give the cheerleader something to go goo goo gaga -ga about. You know what I'm talking about, Travis? I got you. I got you, Brian. I am reading what you're writing down, sir. And you got to like this defense that you see from Centerburg right now. Making everything challenging. They're unable to get it down on the block, are the Vikings. Just every pass, tough. And it, it, it's seeming like Columbus Academy now is trying to slow things down, run clock. Now it's under three minutes, but they're just going they're they're going back and forth. Centerburg kind of allowing it right now. I mean it's not it's a one possession game, which is crazy. So Centerburg doesn't have to rush anything, but you know, the Vikings slowing it down. But I'm being told in the chat section by uh, Charity here, it says, Goo Goo Gaga is definitely not a cheer term. Uh, agree to disagree today, Charity. And she also wants to see the boys pick it up here at the end. And that's a big time shot. Three points right there. Actually make it a two, long two. And still Centerberg unable to get the bucket. This is not the night to go cold. And maybe it is that fatigue factor from playing a tough one, a tough four quarters last night against Fredericktown. And you talked in the pregame about a potential hangover when you come in and you know, you're know you riding high off the wave of a huge victory on the previous night. So you know not that Centerburg would overlook a team like Columbus Academy, but sometimes you expend so much energy like they did last night knocking off the Freddies. They can have an impact, certainly in the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And with COVID, this game... This shouldn't have been a back-to-back. -back. They would have had a couple days to get ready for this. As Cass hits the first. But because of COVID, they had to schedule as much as possible, so it's a back-to-back -to, -back to start the week for them. And it's back-to-back. -back. Made free throws at the trip that time. Extends the advantage out to seven. And the way that the Trojans have been shooting, 
you would feel like that's going to hold up. Yeah, it's the largest lead tonight for the Vikings. Mead. He's going to pull the trigger. There it is. And he's going to find the bottom. McMead. Big time. Triple right there. And that's all they needed. Mead passed up on a couple open looks. Just had to get that confidence. He hits that. Might be the start of something, especially if Centerberg can get a stop here. Still a minute 53 left. A ton of time left. You don't have to foul immediately. It's only two possessions. So Centerberg right back into the game. Off the first field goal here of the second half for Centerberg. 14 minutes it took. 14 minutes and 8 seconds for Centerberg to break into the scoring column with a field goal in the second half. But they finally did, and it's back to that four-point lead for the Vikings. Can the Trojans extend their win streak out to five in a row? here in this non-conference matchup against a very good, very game Columbus Academy team that's trying to take one on the road here. Still one with a cold shooting performance of their own. No, and uh, after this game, Centerberg, one day to prepare for an East Knox squad at East Knox that took Fredericktown to the wire at the dog pound last week. So three tough games. In one week, it's a big gut check for them. They passed the first test. They have a little work to do in the second. So they go full court. Looking for the trap. Don't get it. And once again, we'll see the Vikings running clock here. We get up to a minute and a half left in regulation. At some point, Centerberg may have to choose to foul. And we'll see if they've done their homework, if they know who struggles at the free throw line. And I think that's, they were trying to get them to foul. Reeves, they get the turnover. Great job right there, poking it away from the backside oh, by Mead. He goes down to the floor. Timeout taken, I believe, by Centerberg. Mead wanted to collect that quick and throw up a three. Almost lost the handle, but... Coach Marhefka able to get the timeout. 109 left, Centerberg down only four. Yeah, it's going to come down to the wire here. And of course, every possession so pivotal uh, here for the Trojans. And we'll see what they can do offensively. Mead was able to knock down the three on the previous possession. Jones, of course, held scoreless here in the second half. We'll see if they can try to feed it into Carter. Either that, I'd see them trying to go to Carter. Maybe it gets a couple people down into the block on him. Opens up Meade for a shot. But this is good for Coach Marhefka. He gets to draw out this plan for a pivotal possession for the Trojans here. Not going to say a miss is going to end the game because there's still a minute nine left. Both teams still have to make free throws. There's a lot of timeouts left. But completely changes the complexion if they can get a bucket here. Monster possession coming up for the Trojans. Look for Meade. He's the inbounder. Look for him to pass it in and slip out behind the arc. Maybe get a shot off here. They got to get it in first. And that's not going to help that out. Send it to Hauk in the backcourt. Takes the screen from Griffith. Now here's Meade off of a double screen. He's going to try a deep one. He's going to come up short, though. Jones battling, and it's into the hands of Reeves. Yeah, that's, just, that's not a good so shot selection from six feet beyond the arc. Centerberg almost got the turnover there, but they're going to send Reeves to the line. Reeves only a 51%. Correction, that's 51% field goal shooter. I, I can't read my own writing, Brian, tonight. Yeah, that's pretty good from the floor, shooting 51% on the season. You got to think most of those are at the block, though. But still, got to make your layups, and that's what he does. One and one. Big first Doesn't one, get it. rims out, Jones with the clear. Here comes Meade in between the circles. Dashing through the lane, a lot of contact. And Mick Meade's going to go to the foul line. Two big ones on the way. Perfect person to have going to the line. He's a 65% shooter, the best on the team. So 
So not a great percentage on the season for Meade. But he's the best person to have at the line on this team. And it looks like Mick's a little hurt, too. We'll see if that affects it. It does. Needs to make this, though, to bring it to one possession with 42 seconds left. Centerberg with two timeouts remaining as well. Meade hits it, and they do get the timeout. So just a three-point game as we are starting to get into the final seconds here of tonight's game. And you have to think, if they can't get a steal here on the inbound, foul Reeves. Got to foul Reeves. Coaches have been yelling for him to... Yeah, so that definitely becomes part of the strategy here, and perhaps you don't have a defender on them or you try to offer some help, but it looks like actually Reeves is going to stay on the bench, so Coach Warsler predicting that as we were just talking about that he's not a great free throw shooter. They got to get it in, though, and they do. Almost stolen, but they're going to get the foul. Check this out one more time. They're going to actually call it on Meade, not Jones. That's his fourth. And back into the game will be Reeves. So Reeves in there to do some rebounding down on the block for the Vikings. As here's a big free throw attempt on the way from Logan. And he misses. And we're going to get a foul on Reeves. Boy, and that's best case scenario if you're a Trojans fan because that is going to put Carter Jones on the line with no time coming off the clock. So still 40 seconds remaining. And you got a chance here to cut it down to just a one-point game. And that's a big rebound because that was the last one and one. Jones hits both. It's a one-point game. It'll stay a one-possession game no matter what they do from the line on the other end. Jones is clutch with the first free throw. Expect nothing less from this kid. Big free throw here. Got him. The senior lefty, two for two. And so now the Trojans with a chance to try to poke it away. They do, but it's out of bounds. And it'll stay with Columbus Academy. So now Centerberg, you can foul Reeves. Even if he makes one, it's still one or two. It's still a one possession game. So those two free throws were huge for the Trojans. We go to 30 seconds left. Reeves with a quick kick out there to Compton. A guy that the Trojans don't want to foul. He hands it off and quickly Parker Logan gets sent to the free throw line. And Logan 0 for 3 from the line tonight. Now with the pressure on even more. So that was a good foul. Either him or Reeves were the ones they wanted to get. And once it got into the hands of Logan, there were three guys around him. But he hits the first. Yeah, it does switch this one. Big shot for him. The 6-2 junior. Misses oh, the second. Oh, what a Reeves. rebound. Skies up to collect a huge offensive board. Big play oh, right there. An easy layup for him. Laps in defense there. You got to get the foul. McMead now kicks it to Jones for three. Oh, <laughs> Carter Jones. Clutch jeans on fleek as he drops a bomb from the corner and brings it down to just a one point game. Now if you can't get the rebound off the inbounds pass, you have to foul immediately. There are only four seconds left. Carter Jones leads everybody with 16 points now. 
But that offensive rebound by Kevin Reeves, a brutal blow to the Trojans. So here we go. Big inbound on the way for Parker Logan. Undefended, he's gonna get it in to Compton. A Little bit of time comes off the clock and Tanner is gonna go to the line. 81% free throw shooter on the season. Best on the squad. So clearly not the guy that you want to foul if you're Centerberg, but you still got to knock him down. Centerberg with no timeouts left. If he hits the first, do you intentionally miss the second with only two seconds left? That would be something that Coach Warsler probably is making his team aware of now. And they are going to send Kevin Reeves back. So nobody in to rebound. We'll see if Compton tries to miss this one. Instead, he'll make it. And they get the timeout. So that actually sets up a chance for Centerberg only down three. I would have I had him miss it because you had your guys back. Rebound gets it up the midcourt. It's at least a second and a half off. You get a desperation heave. Now they have something set up where you get a couple quick passes. Maybe something from between midcourt and the, the arc. Maybe the, uh, the white volleyball line there, which it's a decent chance for Centerberg. And for Coach Marefka, I think you probably got to try to on such limited clock action here. Get it into the hands of your all Ohio and Carter Jones, six foot five. He can shoot over the top of pretty much anybody. And as you just saw, pretty lethal sometimes when he can get some space, knock down the last three from the corner. And you want, I see coaches practice this. They take a couple minutes either before or after practice, hit shots, taking shots up from midcourt, from, you know, just in front of midcourt because. You're going to see this situation maybe once or twice in a year. So they practice this. It's just, can they, you know, can they get it to go in a game situation? What will the Trojans have up their sleeve? Can they pull out some wizardry? A little magician's play here with 2.6 to go. So they're going man to man. Possibility for somebody to get, a, get on a run. Gregory to trigger, everybody going deep. He's gonna send it hell, Mary, and it's gonna be picked off by Compton. That is gonna do it, folks. Huge win here by Columbus Academy on the road. They knock off Centerburg 35-32. We'll take a quick timeout, we'll be back. We'll have some post-game coverage. Final stats, including an interview with our player of the game, who we'll have to discuss and decide who it is. Weigh in with a comment. On our Facebook feed, let us know who you think should be tonight's player of the game. We'll be right back on the OH Report, live and free, right after this. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Celebrating 20 years of service at 164 East Main Street in Centerburg. Family owned and operated with premium products and services. So make it Webb's and get what you need to keep your engines running. Proud sponsor of Trojans Basketball. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. 
Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webster. All right, we are back with our player of the game, Kevin Reeves from Columbus Academy, helping his Vikings win 35-32 tonight here on the road. And gritty win for you guys. Tell me what it was like through your perspective. Obviously, the scoring really dropped off in the second half, and uh, you guys were defending really well. Well, what was that game like there over the last two frames? Well last two frames like we just went by our school's mantra play hard and guard i mean we might not be able to score the ball that well but we sure as hell can defend i mean i don't i don't really know how many points we gave up but like i mean we're deadly on defense that's all yeah you only gave up 12 points in the second half and i think centerberg only was able to capitalize on two field goals what do you think was the difference from the first half they only still had 20 but you really suffocated them there in the second half uh what did you guys do different thing differently if anything well i mean we just we just played our ball we all we did was just play our viking basketball we we just fought for each other, especially for Tanner because he's from Centerburg. So, I mean, this, this really, this is just, that was just a feel for us, that entire second half. And I see you guys now have won, I think, like five out of your last six, starting to get the ball rolling a little bit with some positive momentum. As we're getting close to tournament draw now, it's only like a week and a half away. How big does every contest feel for you guys in terms of trying to get a, a top seed? I mean, everything, every contest is extremely important. I mean... But we just keep, we just got to keep playing our basketball. I mean, it, all that matters is that we're playing for each other. And we're playing to represent our school. So, and then how big did this win feel here tonight? Centerburg uh, probably has been in the conversation for being in the state rankings. You know, just one loss before tonight's game. This feel like a big one here on the road. Oh, this is huge. This is just a huge win. I mean, we lost Frankstown, which who they beat, but I feel like this win is probably one of the biggest of our season. But this is all for Tanner because he's from Centerburg. This, this is all for him, man. All right, that's Kevin Reeves giving a shout out to Tanner, our Knox Community Hospital player of the game. And if you want to take a look in the camera there and give a shout out to anybody else that's watching out there, now's your time. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Hey, Grandma. Hey, Grandpa. Hey, Grandma Reeves. I mean, well. what? What's up, family? <laughs> All right, Kevin Reeves. Hey, man. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. A uh, big performance in the paint tonight. Game high, 14 points. Right. Thank you. All right, we're going to take one more time out. We will be back. Final stats and wrap things up from the heart of Ohio. When you're on the go and need a fix, both for your body and your vehicle, stop in at Webb's Marathon and Automotive. Celebrating 20 years of service at 164 East Main Street in Centerburg. Family owned and operated with premium products and services. So make it Webb's and get what you need to keep your engines running. Proud sponsor of Trojans Basketball. The Teen Advisory Council of Knox County engages youth in activities to prevent violence, underage drinking, and suicide. TAC encourages youth to stand up for themselves and maintain healthy relationships among their peers. TAC empowers members with confidence to use their voice for positive change, enhance their leadership skills, and plan and coordinate events. If you would like to learn more about TAC, visit us at www.tacofnox.org. Knox is the third place I have delivered, and hands down, it has been the best. We're thankful that we received excellent care so close to home. 
Knox Community Hospital welcomes you to our new freestanding birthing center where you can safely labor, deliver, and recover in a state-of-the-art birthing suite. It was empowering and I couldn't think of a better place to bring Parker into the world. Knox Community Hospital, elevating care. Back here to wrap things up from Centerburg where the Trojan Red Army did not have much to cheer about here at home as Centerburg gets knocked off 35 to 32 to end their four game win streak. I'm Brian Skrosky joined by Travis Brardy. Let's go ahead and dive into the final stats here. And amazingly, Travis, I think if you would have told head coach Marefka that they would hold the Vikings without a three-point field goal and they would make six, that clearly they would walk off the floor as victors here tonight. But the turnover differential added up in the second half and then just a cold shooting, only nine field goals for the Trojans. Yeah, nine turnovers for Centerburg. They had as many turnovers in the second half as they had field goals. And the stat to look at, six threes, they only had three two-point field goals hey. all night. And two of them came from Carter Jones inside outs. Johnson also got a layup there in the first half. But yeah, tough night. Uh, got totally out rebounded thanks you know the play of Kevin Reeves who I, I believe he had to have had a double a double double tonight and especially that huge rebound on the free throw that led to two points towards the end of the game that was the difference in this 35-32 victory Trojans just couldn't find their touch offensively in the second half at any point. They were never able to get any type of momentum held without a field goal in that third quarter and I think for the most part that you have to credit the Vikings for swallowing them up on the perimeter. The guards never looked comfortable for Centerburg, and that's why they only had nine total field goals and 15 giveaways in this one, Travis. Uh, I, I think just the defensive pressure out on the perimeter, forcing the guards into fast decisions and the rotations. They, I mean, they were just spot on all night for the Vikings. I was really impressed with what they did defensively, and that's what Kevin told us was kind of their M.O., yeah, and uh, another stat, Centerburg only 6 of 12 from the line in the second half. And, you know, that, sh that shooting percentage for them, they're, they're a 43% free throw shooting team. But, you know, you make, you make one or two more free throws in that situation at the end of the game is completely different. So, I mean, once again, here in, in the high school game, especially with any team, it's going to most likely come down to free throws, and that's, that's what it did tonight. Once again, final score here, 35-32. Centerberg gets knocked off for just the second time on the year. And we talked a little bit about a potential hangover, Travis, after beating Fredericktown, a state-ranked undefeated team last night. In your opinion, was there any type of that effect here on display tonight for the Trojans? Yeah, just look at the second half. Couldn't even hit a, a field goal in that third quarter. Yeah, you, you got to account that to Columbus's uh stifling defense as well but you know it's just a tough draw for coach Marhefka to go against the state ranked Fredericktown team and then a, a, t a Columbus Academy team in back to back nights if Centerberg was going to be able to pull this out that would have been a big two game stretch for them but even at one and one it's still a pretty decent uh, outcome for them going into Friday's game at East Knox 
like to thank everybody out there for watching here tonight and thank our incredible crew for holding it down out here at the Berg on camera tonight and also doing some work on the mic. We had Garrett Parlett and Storm Blunchley, the dynamic duo here on the OH Report. Travis Berardi helped me call and track stats. My name's Brian Skaronsky. I was your play-by-play -play and producer. Thanks again for watching. More live streams on the way every single day on the OH Report. No breaks and never any paywalls here, so keep it with us live and free throughout the season. We'll be back with more hoops tomorrow night. But for now, we out.